Today, we're going to take a look at a report from Headset about pricing trends for cannabis. Uh, ultimately, you have to understand pricing trends in the cannabis industry to kind of learn how those trends can impact sales. And so when in, used in conjunction, this data can help you begin to kind of understand where the market might be going and then drill into some specific pricing landscapes, which we're going to help you do. Welcome back to The Talking Hedge. I'm Josh Kincaid, Capital Markets Analyst and host of your Cannabis Business Podcast. So we're going to start by looking at the two most important metrics with regards to pricing. That's the average item price and the average EQ price. The average item price is the average cost of a unit purchased by the consumer after the discounts, but before the consumer paid taxes. So in Washington, this is before the consumer paid excise and sales tax. In the category of edibles, the average EQ price is the average price per milligram of THC in the product. So on the first graph, we can see that over the last two years, the average item price for edibles in Washington has increased by almost 10% from $13 in January of 2019 to $14 in September 2020. However, the average EQ price has had an equally steady decline from $0.18 cents per milligram of THC in January to $0.16 cents in September 2020, a decrease of more than 11%. So looking at the edibles unit volume by package size, it's going to tell us a little bit more about how this can be the case with the average item price. It's a lot more useful metric when we include the context of package size. Larger packaging and cannabis products almost certainly have higher prices than smaller packages, and therefore pricing trends can be further clarified by understanding the package size sales trends within a category. And this is especially true within the edible category in Washington, where there's been a significant shift in the unit volume to the primary package size over the last two years. An interesting point here is that 100 milligrams, which is the highest legal potency, they've increased their proportional share within the category by 23% since January of 2019, having grown from 69% of units to 85% often referred to as single serves, the 10 milligrams have decreased in unit volume shares by over 52%. Single serve edibles drop from 19% of unit volume in January 2019 to only 9% in September of 2020. Looking at edible unit volume by price over time, average prices provide only part of the picture. So we're looking at distribution of unit volume across price bands to better understand prices. So you can see the average item price of $10, but the product prices can be distributed in very different ways. So for example, a market with one product price at a dollar and another product priced at 19 would have an average item price of 10 bucks. But in contrast, the market with one product price at $9.50 and another product price at $10.50 would also have an average item price of $10. So these two markets, despite having the same average item price, are actually very different because one of these differentiations, the best way to understand the price in a market is to examine the distribution of products in that market. So in the graph, we can see that the proportion of edibles in Washington priced between 10 and 15 has significantly increased since the beginning of 2019, rising from 24% in January to 35% in September of 2020. And the opposite has occurred in the under $5 price range, which has decreased in unit volume shares from $18 or from 18% to 6% over the same time frame. So these trends can closely mirror the trajectory seen in the unit volume by package size and therefore likely can explain the shift in consumer preferences towards the 100 milligram edibles and away from the 10 milligram single serves. It's also notable that the unit share of the higher prices, that's the 15 to 20 and the 20 to $25, they've held quite steadily since the beginning of 2019, indicating that there continues to be a set of customers looking for edibles at those price ranges. And since the 100 milligram size is clearly an incredibly important part of the Washington edible market, you can dive into more details with this next graph. So we're going to filter out uh, for Washington edible market the 100 milligram package sizes and choose to slice or group up the results by segment. So there's uh, other options to look at. But here we can see the average item price for a month for 100 milligram edibles within the category's top five best selling segments. So the candy, lozenge, and gum segment immediately stands out with a significantly lower average item price than the other four segments over the entire time frame. In August of 2020, for example, the average item price for 100 milligram candies was $12.85. 
as 14.4% lower than the average price for gummies, the next cheapest segment. So within the next chart, we can see that the percentage of total 100 milligram edibles belongs to each corresponding segment and the price band bucket. The darker the green, the higher the proportion of total unit volume for that bucket and highlighting a few notable trends in red. First, the candy lodges and gum segment, they've got the highest total unit volume of all edible segments, both in the 10 to 15 and five to $10 price ranges, meaning that the candies are the dominant choice for 100 milligram edibles under 15 bucks by a fairly significant significant margin. And second, the caramels, chews, and taffy segments in the $15 to $20 range contribute more unit volume than the other uh, baskets in this landscape. And notable how weakly distributed this segment is across the price brands. So it tells us that the market may have centered around the narrow range as the optimum price for the 100 milligram edibles of that type. However, the data is for all sales for the beginning of 2019 through August of 2020. So looking at how segments are growing and what price they're growing at the fastest is the, the unit volume over the last 90 days and the growth over the last year. So this chart can convey a large amount of information, but can take some effort to fully understand it. So we filtered out the results to show sales of 100 milligram edibles in the only top five best selling segments. So you can see listed on the vertical axis to the left, each bubble represents 100 milligram edibles sold with the corresponding segment. So the size of the bubble indicates the total unit volume that can that that product group has over the past 90 days and the horizontal position of the bubble indicates the growth over time uh, from one year ago so with that context we can see that the uh, over the last 90 days that caramels and chews and taffies in that 15 to 20 dollar price bucket were the fastest movers followed by candies in the 10 to 15 dollar range we also saw this in the previous pricing landscape chart more importantly for both those segments, we can see that the five to ten dollar price bucket has significantly higher year over year growth than the more expensive price buckets. And in fact, in all five segments, the ten to fifteen dollar price range has the higher year over year growth from the fifteen to twenty dollar price range, indicating that the hundred milligram edible market is still shifting towards a lower average price. However, since there's still strong demand for edibles in the middle of the pricing landscape, an edible manufacturer might want to consider offering two brands, one price that's consistent mid-range and one for the fast growing value end of the pricing spectrum. So this last graph shows the proportion of 100 milligram edible unit volume by the average item price and brand rank. So we could see that there's a significantly higher portion of unit volume in the 10 to $12 price range than the brands marked uh, or ranked sixth through 15th, it might imply that there's at, that they are at the top of the ranking because of the low prices, or it could also mean that they're reducing their margins due to the higher volume. So interesting, the sixth through 15th ranked brands saw that the unit volume for the middle of the pricing landscape with 42% of unit sales coming from that $15 to $17 price range over the previous six months. So that's indicating that producers of 100 milligram edibles should probably not target that price range if they're looking to stand out. So it's just one example of the type of analysis that can be done. If you have the right type of data, you can customize this for not only edibles, but pre-rolls or whatever else. Kind of important to have somebody who can uh, tap into this kind of information, hopefully make it uh, understandable or you can just come back to the talking hedge and listen to yours truly. With that, we're gonna roll this one up. I'm Josh Kincaid, this is the talking hedge. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe or don't, and I'm out. Don't forget to smash that like button on your way out and check out these other videos that we've got.